Welcome to Sponsored by Nobody, this week sponsored by Bonsai Trees. Little trees you try not to kill. Fun for all ages? Yeah, probably. It is November 2020, and you are listening to Leaves in the Jungle, Season 1, Episode 1. In this game, we will be using the Wild Sea World setting and Wild Sea system. I am Ian, playing the Firefly, and we have... Austin playing the Ardent Drock. I'm Bev. I'm playing Illidan the Gal. Uh, I'm Dylan, and I'm playing Nick Attack the Celecrae. I'm Jonathan, and I'm playing Recatap Rotom the Ectus. Awesome. Okay. So, in this game, a lot of the playtests people have started with doing a fun little exercise to kind of get you warmed up into the, uh, how do I word this? The mindset of gaming and exploration and just the weirdness of the wild sea. So we're going to start with a little exercise in that kind of a vein. I'm going to give you guys a whisper and a chart, and you guys are going to each tell me where that would take you no wrong answers except for certain people you know who you are um (laughs) and yeah just uh let me know where you think this whisper and chart would take you so the whisper is moonlit light and the chart is scribbles on a leaf there is a map that is scrawled onto an ironwood tree leaf that can only be revealed doing, during a solstice moon. Shun at the correct height. Ooh, okay. Um, kind of got like a butterfly grove um, where there's lots of caterpillars around and they're doing that thing where they kind of like chew into the leaves and in such a way that if you hold some of the leaves up and they match the stars, they will give you clues to treasure or something fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's fun. I'm thinking that it's a uh, sacred circle that is either carved or drawn into a tree. Uh, If it's carved, then it's like a carved divot. And if it's drawn, then it's drawn around like a knot in the tree. And leaves will fall into that divot over time, maybe into like a pool of uh, water that's collected into it. And then however those leaves fall, depending on uh, how like the lines and leaves line up, a map is drawn from those leaves. Ooh, nice. And Dylan? Mm-hmm. Oh man, all the good ideas have already been covered. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Whatever shall we no, do? Again, man? no wrong answers, no worries. Just get creative with it. Yeah, as you say, like uh, probably something that would need to be read during the light of the moon, and therefore that that uh, atmosphere would have something to do with revealing like a, a hidden message or something else like that. Like as you say, with the scribbles on a leaf, when uh, when Bev was talking about the caterpillars chewing holes through them yeah just like giving you like a star chart in uh uh in regards to like something that would exist in the sky okay yeah very cool okay um so i hope that warmed everybody up a little bit and thank you for all the answers that was some very cool things to think about Hopefully you liked that. We're going to start with you guys. Who wants to describe their character first? Uh, Any takers? Yeah, I'll go. Okay. So, Rekatap Rodham is an ectus, which is a cactus person. Uh, Bipedal, um, flowers growing kind of all over him. Uh, it's his it's his male part of the season. Uh, you know they don't they don't go all male or all female with the flowers at a time. You don't want to accidentally self pollinate. You know, 
plants and all that. Um, his oh, right my. leg, <laughs> his right leg is noticeably more freshly grown than the rest of him, and is actually a little bit shorter, giving him a bit of an awkward limp. And uh, in order to kind of make up for that, he does wear a wooden shoe that gives about an extra four inches to that leg. So whenever he walks, you can hear a thump, tap, thump, tap, thump on the uh, deck of the ship. Ooh. Nice. Someone else want to do their character? I can go. Um, yeah, Illidan is a gal um, and a corsair. Uh, basically, if you could think like an old-timey swashbuckler movie, the hero of that movie... Um, but a mushroom person who's orange and yellow bioluminescent. Um, just, yeah, very classically heroic in that kind of Errol Flynn type way. Austin, can you do your character next? Yes. My character's name is Rook, and he's an ardent. He is a tall, craggy young man who's obviously built for surviving. He has various things adorning his belt for multiple survival situations. Food, grappling hooks, lots of grappling hooks. Uh, he mainly survives off of joining random crews on hunts or contracts sent to him other people. Anybody who will gladly sacrifice that contract to save others on any of his journeys deeper into the tangle. Uh, he ha he hails from a large splitling far to the north, so he's used to harsher conditions and being alone. Okay. It'll work with the team with necessary. Cool. And then Dylan, can we have your character, please? Um, Nick Attack is a Celecre with uh, three arms and a slight build, uh, a skin woven of silk, and uh, he has a tendency to be aloof, hard to find at the best of times, and uh, he has a penchant for uh, kite sailing. Um, he grew up in the wilds, generally, and as such doesn't take to people easily. Um, past that, he makes his living as like a warrior and navigator, you know? pressing his way into whatever sort of work will find him. Cool. Very cool. Okay, so, Bev, what mm. type of fruit, vegetables, or berries are nearby in this area? Like, what's the local kind of vegetation in the edible variety look like? Edible variety. Um, just, like, off the cuff? Yeah, off the cuff. What's, like... We're going to paint a picture of the scenery here. I'm kind of seeing like like things like if you could picture like a halfway point between a dragon fruit and a strawberry, you know, like about softball size, just kind of like in little clusters dotted around the tree branches of um, kind of whatever the largest, closest tree is. That's the okay. first thing that comes to mind. One more? Okay. No, that's good. That's perfect. So mm -hmm. the local berry of this area or fruit is a dragon fruit cross strawberry looking thing i like it yeah. um dylan what are the small animals nearby what do they look like um they're probably like a small like a hound rat fusion and they probably have like extra extra developed forearms that allow them to go from branch to branch Ooh. okay okay so they're like small as a rat but kind of look almost hound like yeah. Ooh, okay. Very cool. Oh, God, that's creepy. Like a... <laughs> oh, man, yeah. the traps for those things. Yeah. Parasite Eve intensifies. <laughs> so good. Um, Jonathan, what is the leaves, trees, foliage around you? Like, what are you cutting through on your ship? Uh, it's all, like, pine, but, like, the needles grow out of the entire limb. So it's just this. It's, it's just a nightmare to get through. Like, it's everything is bristly. Everything is prickly. We swear that some of these things have thistles. They get stuck in your hair. They get stuck in your clothes. 
it's it's just awful. Like you, you, if you've ever walked through like grass, and I I don't know if y'all have like the same grass seeds that we do, but we have like they have little stickers mm. that don't even hurt. They're not they're not they're not like sand spurs. They just stick to everything, and you're digging them out like three days later. That's what we're going through, and the ship is just covered in it. Oh, brutal! I'm loving it. Yes. Uh, Austin, what is a nearby landmark or something that's like a point of interest in this area? You know, uh, there's definitely a, uh, an unusually large uh, junk mass floating around versus such an area that doesn't seem to have that much habitation. Ooh, okay. It's made up of a blend of what you can see to be pre-verdant structures and junk from probably uh, an old uh, rip. Oh, very cool. Are there anyone living, like, are people living on this giant junk mass, or? Uh, it seems there are as there are evidence of new and old settlements, so you can't quite tell. Oh, okay. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so that's, that's the area you guys are currently sailing through. You three have just arrived. Um, one of the large chunks of this junk mass has broken off about a week or so ago and kind of drifted away. And the four of your, you, your ship pulls up to this large junk mass that had drifted away, and you're hoping to scal uh, scavenge some of the stuff off of it. We're going to start this campaign with what this game calls as a montage. So each of you is going to get one action, and you're going to get to do something to interact with the world and this large piece of junk um and then we'll go from there so who wants to take the first long action the argent's willing to take the first watch sure and rock will take that he's eager to prove himself to his new teammates and earn their trust okay you know, trust builds the team mm -hmm. so you're you're taking first watch uh who's Who's doing what else? I think that Rekatap will be... He'll be trying to uh, dredge up something to eat. Okay. So, like, lower, you know, lower, lower off the ship if we're, uh, if we've dropped anchor and he's just going around picking berries, looking for, uh, whatever, what, whatever the stuff that they use to make the impossible burger now is. <laughs> but like 300 years from now so like the 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 sage just grows in it already <laughs> yeah okay okay so you're you're looking for some food stuff yeah awesome okay who else i guess that would be me and i'm looking out for signs of uh pre-verdant facilities that seem more than just how they know those contain generally blueprints from the pre -verdant. so you're looking for buildings sorry non non residential buildings the non residential frame, buildings those generally have this large chunk that's in right in front of you guys here um that had broken apart uh yeah it's got it's got a few weird looking buildings that you might not have seen before in it Man, I'm I'm going for some of those dragon fruit strawberries. <laughs> I've been thinking about yeah. them since they were first mentioned. Nice. Awesome. Um and I think after having like heavily clothed myself to avoid sticking to as few of these sticky buggers that are flying around in like all the the grass and seeds that you mentioned, especially because you know, like I'm a little bit porous, so I've just like heavily clothed myself to try and combat that a little bit. But mostly I'm looking around the piles, mostly keeping an eye out for trouble, but also just trying to see, you know, like what, what can I find that's shiny and, and valuable and, you know, good for trading or good for decorating, you know? <laughs> okay. Okay, cool. Okay. So that's, I'm going to do some rolls here. So uh, let's see here. Can Rekatap give me a roll for, uh, what would that be? That'd be like a foraging of some sort kind of roll. So let's see what the character sheets call foraging. That'd be gathering. You're because you're gathering some food supplies. So do you want to roll for gathering? Yeah. 
So that's just four dice, I believe, for you. All right. How does our dice roller work? Is it just exclamation point? Mm-hmm. Let's just see if that works. Hey, it did. Hey, there you uh, go. That is three one oh. one two. So <laughs> bad with a twist. <laughs> bad with a twist. That's not the correct term, but I'm going with it. Disaster Sounds like with a, a drink. twist. <laughs> so the disaster is is you're leaning over the edge of this ship. You're you're holding on to a rope. You know you've you've climbed down a little ways. You're leaning out, trying to pick berries and fruits and just different herbs and spices and all sorts of things, trying to grab different critters as they go by, the ones that you see are edible. Um, and as you're doing this, you notice one of those crazy rat hounds is chewing through your rope. And it's fully chewed through that. You fall, and you're now caught in that upper layer of the tangle. I will I will make noise as I'm falling. <laughs> Okay, um, and then, so this is our first twist of the game. So twists is a neat mechanic that anyone have an like a twist for this. It doesn't have to be good, it doesn't have to be bad. What's something interesting that could happen as he's falling? I have one. Yeah, go um, for it. So, uh, Regatap has a uh, like a, this, these stories that he tells of this one specific pin wolf which is like what if a wolf but spider legs and like only four of them though <laughs> and okay. uh this one specific one that's just covered in scars and they they they've 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 fought each other in the past and they've even saved each other a few times and he often says, "Like, oh, we'll we'll die together," or it, it's it's just this whole thing. <laughs> that pin wolf is there, not like right there, but it's watching him, and they they like they make eye contact, and it just slowly like walks back into the into the thresh. <laughs> okay, I love it. But, I love it. But it's enough to get him to be like, "Ooh, oh no!" <laughs> Calling okay. up a rope. So, you're panicking over the side of this thing. Um, let's switch to... Uluden, what was your... What was what were you doing during this? Um, mostly just kind of keeping a watch out for trouble, but also kind of casually looking for shiny things that might be worth something. Okay, okay. Um, so, you and Duroc were looking out for trouble, it sounds like. Yeah. So, both of you here just a huge absolute horrendous scream as Rekatap falls over the edge at the same time okay. what are you guys doing i feel like i look for the nearest rope that's attached to the boat and i just like pull up my sword and i just like fully heroically hey off the edge to see what there is i don't even know someone is necessarily in danger I'm just like, oh my gosh, a chance to be a hero. I love it. I love it. Let Rekatep me come is, save you, my comrade. Rekatap is definitely making sounds like he's in danger. <laughs> I mean, I'm mostly playing my theme song in my head as I go down. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> as she leaps off the edge, I'm going to hook a grappling hook in the back of her belt and get ready to yank her back when she grabs. <laughs> I appreciate you, buddy. <laughs> Nick attack out of the thresh. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay. Uh, I love or, that. Because I was wondering sorry. how I was going to make it it's, out of that if I didn't find a rope. It is Rekatap, but I'm making a note that my next character will be named Nick Attack. <laughs> There's already a Nick Attack. You can't There's a Nick Attack! I'm right, I'm right here. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. Um, there is okay. a Nick Attack. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> So as you guys are diving over, Nick Attack, you're um, hanging out, getting some of these berries, just eating them, having a nice time, really. Like, it's it's a pretty pleasant day, and these are really good fruits and berries. Um, you see this, at, as you see Rekatap falling, you then see Illuden diving over the edge after him, and Drac hooking a uh, grappling hook to the end and holding on tight, just trying to save. What are you doing as you watch this? Yeah. I'm probably in mild disbelief, 
right? Like almost <laughs> like they're clowning around. You know, I I maybe don't take the gravitas of the uh, the situation seriously, and I'm just gonna like turn back to my uh, my foraging attempts and continue to enjoy my nice day, and not let <laughs> this get between me and me and my uh, my task. You've they've they've done this before. They'll be fine, right? Yeah, like they're all three of them are on it. I'm sure they can handle it. They don't like what what am I even supposed to do? I'm all the way over here. <laughs> excellent, excellent. I love it. Okay, uh, Illidan, let's have you roll. Um, let's see, what would be a good roll for this one? I don't think let's a roll panic leap. Skill. Leap. <laughs> so yeah, so that's going to be four dice for you. Yeah. And let's let's roll that. Okay. Um, is there any point for triples? No, unfortunately not. Okay, well then that's a six and a double. <laughs> a six and a double, perfect. Yeah. Okay, so that's a abs. Was that absolute success with a twist? Yeah. Yes, sir. Let's see. Um, triumph. That's the word I'm looking for. Triumph with a twist. Yay. So as Illudin dives over the edge, no fear, not a care in the world. She's done this, or they've done this a thousand times before. They, you know, it's not a big deal. They're They're amazing at what they do. And that's just the truth of it. Uh, and they plus they know that Drock has them. Worst case scenario, so Illidan dives over the edge, scoops Rekatak up in her arms, and Drock just yanks that rope backwards, and both of you fly into the air and land Perfect perfectly time. back on the ship. Um, do you want to throw what the twist is? Me? Yeah. Or anyone else, if you got a better uh, idea. I mean, like if somebody has something, go for it. Because I, I have not thought of a twist at this moment. Uh, stuck to the collar of a shirt is one of those prickly dragon fruit strawberries that we were talking about. Yeah, and I just like grab it and I just start eating it like a hero. Awesome. Not yeah, no, not, not like not like you're <laughs> right in front of not the like, stereotypical jerk with an apple kind of a thing, but just kind of like a you know like. You know, like a snappy one-liner about how I've got you there, and then, and then, you know, like just biting it merrily. Yeah, I'm just picturing Illudin holding Rekatap in her arms and just like eating this uh, fruit berry thing, going, "Don't worry, I caught you." You know, no big deal. Lucky you oh. have me as a friend. <laughs> I am. I'm also picturing this because like the 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 grappling hook was just like in her belt, so she's just being hoisted up by her belt. Or by, by their yeah, belt. Going, they are being hoisted probably, up by their um, belt. Probably, you know, mushroom person androgynous. That's yeah. fair. Yeah. Okay. So, like, they're being hoisted up by their belt, holding me with one arm, hold, eating but, the like, fruit with the other arm, and yet somehow, yeah, somehow we look like really somehow good. Still, like, somehow the perfect hands on the do. hips pose, despite being hoisted by the belt. <laughs> Just, Just a, a lot, lot of core, of core mushroom strength. Nice. Awesome. Okay, well, that's going to end our montage section, because a montage, and I don't know if we fully did that right, but we're still learning the rules here, so that's fun. We're having fun. We're having fun. Because um, a montage is just kind of like a, more or less a single action-y scene that you guys do. Um, Task failed successfully. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so you guys have kind of enjoyed this area. And you're starting to feel like it's time to head home. This this story is going to be a little more railroady for those getting the hint. And you'll see why later. Um, but yeah, you guys start feeling like, oh, it's time to head home maybe. So we're going to do a journey section. So journeying in this game, one person is going to be the sailor, the... What's the word they use here for this? If anyone knows it, feel free. Mm -hmm. One person's going to be at the helm. They'll be the captain, for lack of better words. And one person is going mm -hmm. to be on watch. So you who would like navigator? to be... Navigator? Sorry, the first one, navigator? Yeah, yeah, navigator. That's a good word. Yeah. So one person will be at the helm and be the navigator. And the other person will be on watch. So who wants to be the navigator? I'll be the navigator. And then who wants to be on watch? Uh, I'll do it. So we have Rekatap navigating and Nick Attack on watch. Nick Attack. 
That's not going to get oh. confusing. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <Yeah. laughs> Listeners, we we made these names without knowing Nick that this would happen. <laughs> As as somebody named Jonathan, <laughs> this happens all the time. Uh, okay, so whoever's Rekatap, you are at the helm, so you get to choose whether you cut a path, forge ahead, or drop anchor. Cutting a path is you travel at a steady speed, being safe. Um, forging ahead is you travel quite fast. Uh, you don't really have a care about danger or anything. You're just... You're going for it. And dropping an anchor means just that. You drop an anchor and rest. So what would you like to do? I have started a track and marked the first box kind of thing. And that's going to tell you how many actions you need to do before you get there. So mechanically, cutting a path is one box and forging ahead is two boxes. I'm going to cut a path. I've uh, I've forged ahead a lot in the uh, other games, or like in the other like one-shots. It's time for me <laughs> to be careful. Slow and steady. I love it. Okay, so you're cutting a path. You're going nice and steady, a simple speed, smooth. Um, okay, Nick Attack, you are on watch, so I'd like you to roll 1d6, please. And let me know... The number uh, five. That will be a order, which is an encounter with one of the various living things, or some kind of more or less non-nature-related experience on the wild sea. So as your ship's kind of going along, you notice off in the distance. Since you're on watch, you're keeping a very close eye on all sorts of things, and. You notice a little bit of a flashing kind of light coming off of your port side. And that light, it's getting a little bit brighter as you're cut going along. And it's just flashing there. It doesn't seem to be flashing any kind of signal or any kind of language. It's just, it's almost like, like a sun glare. You know how the sun kind of flashes off uh, shiny objects or large objects as you're moving along in a vehicle. Yeah, it's kind of like that. And it's just, yeah. it looks like it's this thing's getting a little closer to you, though, as you're going along. So my immediate thought is, is it moving towards us or is it just us moving towards it? That sounds like a great use of the scrutinize skill. So can you roll four dice, please? So one, two... Five and six. So the triumph you're going to get is you looking at it. It is coming towards you. It's not coming towards you fast. It's another ship um, just kind of sailing down the sea. Uh, it's It doesn't look like it has a ton of weapons. It doesn't look like it's anything dangerous. It's just, you know, this. it's not uncommon to see other ships on the sea, but... It's not incredibly common, and normally they stay a little bit more distant, especially if they don't know who it is. But this ship seems to be... It, it looks like it saw you guys, and your your group is not unknown on the sea. You're definitely new, but there are a few people who have heard about you, especially because you've been in this area a little while, so people are starting to pick up on your names. And it looks like this ship has noticed who you are, and feels like you're safe to pass a little closer on their way to wherever they're going. So we rob. <laughs> so we rob them. <laughs> Heroically. I will definitely find whoever our uh, our signaling pro is on on the crew and well I'll I'll climb down and start passing around the knowledge that there's another vessel within uh close range of us, and we're probably going to encounter it awesome. soon. Um, does anyone want to do anything with that knowledge? Uh, indicate a wish to trade mm. with them, possibly. We could probably signal them down, gain some more knowledge about the area. Yeah, do you want to roll for signaling, then, to sure. hail them? Uh, yeah, roll four dice for me, please. Uh, one, two, three, five, so total five. A conflict, 
So there's something good and something bad. Um, the good thing is, is they see your signal and, you know, and they wave back to you. Yeah, they're friendly. Um, the bad thing is, is they don't really want to trade with you. Like, they know you guys are safe, but there's still... They don't want to get too close out here in the middle of nowhere. So they're, they're going to actually start giving you a little wider of a berth. They seem to be shy and convey to the crew. Yeah. I, nice. I cut a path. Okay, so we're going <laughs> to cut a path again. <laughs> reach, <laughs> reach trading through violence. You really awesome. want to strike a fair deal. Um, <laughs> does anyone else want to trade watch, or do you still want to be on watch, Nick Attack? Uh, I could probably go one one more shift, unless someone wants to relieve me from it. Yeah, If anybody else wants to take over the helm, they can. You seem to have a handle of it for now. I will just scrutinize our surroundings. Okay. So, you're cutting a path, and you, Nick Attack, you are on mm -hmm. watch. So, Nick Attack, do you want to roll another d6? Very good. And it is a 6. So, that's peace. The entire watch passes without anything out of the ordinary. Um, yeah, so you guys are on your ship, and it is just... You've never seen the Wild Sea so peaceful, so beautiful. You're actually kind of getting close to sunset now. And the way the light is just shining off of these green pine needles, it, it just makes them, it makes each pine needle look like its own tree almost, just the way it's glowing in the light. And there's just something beautiful about the stillness of it all. It, it, like you, you guys are on a big ship with large saws cutting through and I don't know, something almost mystical is happening where the sound of the saws just kind of drones itself out into a small hum in the background as you sail across and the trees swaying very gently. Can I and sense the... to see if I sense see if something's off? Uh sure. I think going with my instincts as opposed to just scrutinizing. Yeah, roll four dice. Uh Six, five, five, two. So a pair with a six. Nice. Okay. So that's a total success. Yeah, something's something's a little weird here. You've never seen the wild sea this peaceful. And the, the pine needles seem to be like almost musical, like wind chimes, like singing as the breeze goes by them. Yeah, something's something's weird going off. And I'm going to give the twist if that's okay with you guys. Sure. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. sure. there is up ahead a little ways, there's something in the sea. It, it almost looks like a, um, the start of a, I believe it's called a rift. Um, that's mm -hmm. the term okay. for a giant hole. Yeah, yeah, it's a hole. Um, so yeah, it, it almost looks like it could be a rift that's partly grown over, almost like a sinkhole trap. But you don't really know. There's just something, something's off you're seeing there. And it's, it's interesting. It's intriguing you. I shout out to the crew that something's off and they need to sharpen their, sentence for, their senses for something that may be afoot. Okay. So, yeah. You, tell, you warn the crew. Um, and again, being a little railroady here, I'm going to tell you guys you're, and again, listeners will learn why later. Um, your senses are telling you all to go investigate it off of the ship. Like, to take a little dinghy or skiff out to it. Oh, we're definitely going to do that. A little chainsaw boom. I'm a natural scout with my wave walking skills. Nice. Okay. Mystery. So, you guys all get in on this little dinghy. And what's it look like as the four of you kind of hop onto this dinghy and start making your way out there? I'm fully at the front doing that whole hands on the hips, one leg, you know, like just like propped up at the front of the boat, you know, like knee up in the air, you know, like, haha, wind in my mushroom, maybe not hair. <laughs> wind in my mushroom. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's a sentence. <laughs> wind through my oh, portobello. Wind through my cap. <laughs> 
Oh yeah, oh, into my you have there, you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Excellent. Anyone else have some flavor to add to that, or? Uh, I'm gripping the sides of the boat, constantly oh, whispering to myself, "It's it's sinking too low. Oh my gosh, we're gonna go down." <laughs> Okay. I don't like um, little ships. I'd rather be just say walking that, by and myself. I just slap him on the shoulder. Fear not, my fearful friend. We'll be just fine. After all, you're with me. <laughs> Give him a little smile wink, even though I lack teeth oh. and eyes. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> somehow my fear is not oh, abated. Wreck it <laughs> somehow will... increased. <laughs> wreck a tap will be, uh, like, kind of in the back of the boat muttering something like, ah, yes, the baleful wolf, <laughs> she calls to me. As there is actually a howling yes. in the distance. Because again, this is not his imagination. The, y- you all have probably seen it, him get that the same <laughs> leg every time. It's happened like three times since you've all been together. And it's always the same <laughs> stupid <laughs> pinball. I refuse to believe cabinet. it just to mess with you. <laughs> Uh, Nick attack. <laughs> um, I'm probably going to bring a kite with me over there, and when we, intending that when we arrive, I'm going to f- try and catch the wind, fly up, and investigate the uh, the rift oh, in greater nice. detail. Okay, so you're you're holding on to like a string of a or a rope of a kite, sort of thing. Perfect. Okay, yeah. the four of you, as you pull up to this rift, you start to see, it's weird. There's there's definitely, you were right to come investigate this. There was something weird about this. It's a, it looks like a tree that doesn't belong almost. It looks like everything around here is a pine tree. And this almost looks like a little cherry tree that has just kind of sprouted out. And it's only about maybe five or eight feet tall at the most and it's just kind of sitting there and as you guys get closer and closer to it you you can almost touch it like you've you've shut off your engine you've slowly gotten closer and you're, you're kind of reaching out your hand to touch this cherry tree to see what it is when all of a sudden boom and everything goes dark and you realize you've fallen for a trap and we're going to end the episode there. I was Ian. And? Uh, Austin. <laughs> I'm Kev. <laughs> Dylan. Jonathan. And we were sponsored by Nobody. Thank you guys. And have a good one.